legal minded remember ignorance is no excuse of the law the law so be in the know of the law the law the law sponsors of in the know of the law are native audio stage and lighting braham Texas. good afternoon and welcome back to another program of in the know of the law on cells fm jamaica's number one radio station my name is delrose green i am a sergeant of police i'm the host for the program and with me is my co-host mr nicholas chambers an attorney at law in the parish of portland i want to say thanks to everyone that is tuning in this evening and always um, but i want to say a special thanks to my kind sponsors native audio stage and lighting braham's texaco um, Task Property Appraisals Company Limited, bringing quality service to you. Also, Toya's Nails, shop number six, Rosemary Plaza, who is a faithful contributor to this program, and she's located at Morant Bay, St. Thomas. And to reach Toya's Nails at shop number six, Rosemary Plaza, you can call her at 876-426-5066. I have also a Sadie, who is always contributing to this program, program. Of course, I want to say thanks to MT Landscaping Services in New York City for always being a part of this program. That's um, Colin in New York and Errol Barnes of Baltimore. I just want to say a pleasant afternoon to you all. Thanks very much to our engineer Cassidy, who is always here with us. Good evening, Mr. Chambers. How are you doing? Good evening, DJ, and good evening, listeners. It's great to be here another evening. Thank you. Uh, before I do, let me just quickly remind persons about the Portland Fish Fry and Cookout on the 11th of April. 2019 that is Brian's Bay Bentley's place and if you have purchased a ticket for March or April 4th um, you it, the ticket is still eligible so just come on down on the 11th of April to uh, Brian's Bay where the police will be having their fish fry and cookout um, compliments of Mr. Duane Wellington the superintendent of police in charge of Portland and the men and women of the Portland division Mr. Chambers we have been <laughs> Uh, Cassidy Taguino, we are, pardon me, oh, oh, I'm saying I'm coming. We have been speaking on the representation of the People's Act, and so we are going to continue. I just want to do a quick little revision, though, Mr. Chambers, on a, mm -hmm. specific, a specific part that has grabbed my interest and continue to do so. And so it is actually section 35 subsection three of the representation <coughs> sorry of the people's act and it says the elector on receiving the ballot paper shall forthwith enter one of the following one of the polling compartments and their mark is or er and their mark is ballot paper by making a cross with a black lead pencil within the space containing the name of the candidate for whom he intends to vote. And he shall then fold the ballot paper as directed so that the initials and the numbers on the counterfoil can be seen without opening it. And hand the paper to the presiding officer who shall, without unfolding it, uh, ascertain by examination of the initials and the numbers appearing thereof that it is the same paper as that as that delivered to the elector and if the same he shall subject to the provisions of section 38 now listen how important this is forthwith in full view of the voter and all others present remove and destroy the counterfoil and deposit the ballot in the ballot box. So whether they're going to use that scissors and cut it up in your presence, or they're going to tear it up fine, 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 or they're going to make a fire and burn it in your presence, well, the latter I'm just joking about. But whichever way they plan to destroy it, the law says it must be destroyed in your presence. That's a counterfoil, and that is your right in section 35, subsection 3, of the representation of the People's Act. At the end of the program, I will remind you of that. Amen. I want to say welcome to those who are joining us on um, WhatsApp. And oh, those yes. who have joined us on Facebook Live at Styles FM. Yes. And also on our individual page. That's DG Angel's page and my page as Is that well. The watch party? Oh, yes. You see, I've learned from the best, you know. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. You just have to show me once and I learn, you know. <laughs> what about so starting watch party this evening? Uh, for the person on WhatsApp in um CD, say present Mama Andy said, Bless up DG and Mr. Chambers. I'm here listening the wor- the ev- this evening. And Carla from Mapen say good evening, DG and Mr. Chambers. And um Namisha. I can't call this name, but it's it's a nice name. Um uh, the person says, good evening, DG Angel. And the person has uh, Normisha. Oh, very nice name, Normisha. Thank you. It's nice having you. Kevoy Chambers from Sunny Hill, St. Thomas. Good evening to my teacher. Also, Mr. Chambers, you are most welcome. And for the persons who want to WhatsApp us, you can do so at 876-453-1444. And to um, Jav- Javin, who has joined us, um, Melissa who's also there as well, Romeo. I see you watching as well. We are happy to have you with us on Facebook Live. All right, so on the last occasion, we were um, delving. We had delved into section 44, mm-hmm. which dealt with the proceedings after the poll is taken. Right. Um, there's a whole lot of things we need to cover. Mm-hmm. So listeners, we're going to go very quickly. For those who have joined class, make sure your pen and papers are ready. They, um, we're going to give notations. Um, I, I was going to say <coughs> something else, but I'm giving notations. And um, I don't know if you want to give the notations. Let's say we come out of your front for Edgar. Mm-hmm. Just go and straighten your program because I don't want to note. I just want whiskey, you know, champagne. You're going to give dictation? Sh- <laughs> yes, and we'll have to give I, I, dictation. Janine um, Mitchell, big up herself. Yes. So, <laughs> Cassidy will remember that on the last occasion, Someone had promised us um, champagne. Is that true? Is that sure one go there? Is that so, Cassidy? Is that true? Is that sure one did there? Um, listeners, we don't have any champagne in in um, <laughs> in in studio with us this afternoon. Fred, I was here but from three thirty. I do know that sometimes, you know, <laughs> things things you forget things. I hear apology coming. So <laughs> we, I hope that on Wednesday, um, we will see the champagne. You know, I have to pause to say. Yes. Good evening to Superintendent Mr. Wayne Cameron, who has joined us live. And so Mr. Wayne Cameron is actually seeing us. Now, Mr. Wayne Cameron is one of my favorite superintendent. Without an apology, mm-hmm. was born in December, of course. <laughs> and so he's very tall, dark, and handsome. Nico- Nicolette, come back. Nicolette, oh what's been God. happening? Drop us a line, man, and tell us what's going on with you. I haven't seen you in class in a while. I hope all is well with you, and I hope that you are still in good health. Um, section 44. All right. Forthwith, upon the close of the poll, in the presence and in full view of the poll clerk and the candidates, or their agents, and if the candidates or any of them are absent, then in the presence of such as are present, and at least two electors, if none of the candidates are represented, the presiding officer shall do the following things. Count the number of votes whose names appear in the poll book as having voted and make an entry thereof on the line immediately below the name of the voter who voted last. Thus, the number of voters who voted at this election in this polling station is stating the number and sign his name there too. He must also count the spoiled ballot papers and of course place them in an envelope that is provided for such spoiled ballot papers. Count the unused ballot papers undetached from the books of ballot papers. Place them with all the stubs of all the used ballots in the special envelope supplied for, the, for that purpose and indicate thereon the number of such unused ballot papers. He must also check the number of ballot papers supplied by the returning officer against the number of spoiled ballot papers, if any, and the number of unused ballot papers and the number of voters whose names appear in the poll book as having voted in order ascertain, to ascertain that all ballot papers are accounted for. So he must account for all ballot, ballot papers. papers. He must open the ballot box and empty its contents upon a table. And having so emptied the contents on the table, he must count the number of votes given to each candidate on one of the tally sheets up Um, supplied, giving full opportunity to those present to examine each... Listen again. He's going to count it Mm -hmm. on a tally sheet, Mm -hmm. and he's going to give full opportunity to those present, the Mm -hmm. indoor agents or even the candidates themselves who might be present, to examine 
each ballot paper for themselves and the poll clerk and not less than two witnesses shall be supplied with tally sheet as well so that they can assist with the countings. Subsection 2 says, in counting the votes, the presiding officer shall reject all ballot papers that which have not been supplied by him or which have not been marked for any candidate or on which votes have been given for more than one candidate or, or upon which there is any writing or mark by which the voter could be identified hmm. other than let me break it down <laughs> please if him never give you the ballot paper it na count mm -hmm. if it was if it has not been marked for a candidate it na go count mm -hmm. if it has if you have voted for more than one person on the ballot paper, it naga count. Mm -hmm. And if there's any writing on the ballot paper that can it, identify who you voted for, it naga count. <laughs> Do not spoil your ballot for your candidate. That is what that is saying right there. But you may continue. Uh, is that section three? Yes. It says, if in the course of count of counting the votes, any ballot paper is found with the counterfoil still attached there too. You see, oh, me love this word counterfoil as I come straight, straight, straight. The presiding officer shall carefully concealing the number thereon from all persons present and without examining them himself, remove and destroy such counterfoil. He shall not reject the ballot merely by reasons of his former failure to remove the counterfoil. Now listen, remember that don't, we explain. Don't remind him, don't remind him which section. Okay. Anybody who can tell us what section and what subsection in that section dealt with the counterfoil, because DG just spoke about it, mm -hmm. dealt with the counterfoil, mm -hmm. yeah, we are going to give you a big up. A Thank big you. Shout out and read to make people know say you're bright. Exactly. And listen. So just call, just let us know WhatsApp 876 453 1444 and tell us what section. But ladies and gentlemen, remember now the counterfoil is what links your vote to the ballot. And so the counterfoil is the only thing that can let anybody know that this is Nicholas Chambers who voted. So the, the thing that them tear off. Is that it is that is what is called a counterfoil, and the law is said it must be destroyed in your presence. Destroyed. So if then church not to drop in our envelope, say no, the law says you must destroy that you take on scissors and cut up a fine fine or your tear up a fine fine that it cannot be recognized. That is so. Okay. All right. So anybody who can tell us whether you're on Facebook Live or you're on WhatsApp, tell us which section of the representation of the people act dealt with the counterfoil. Which section and which subsection, all right? Okay. Let's see if you were listening and if you were learning. Now, sec subsection four says, if in the course of counting the votes, the presiding officer that discovers that he has omitted to affix his initials on any ballot paper has provided by that section mm -hmm. and as indicated <laughs> in the form set out in the second schedule, he shall in the presence of the poll clerk and the agents of the candidate affix his initial to such ballot paper and shall count such ballot paper as if it had been initialed by him in the first, first place, place. Mm -hmm. provided that he is satisfied that the ballot paper is one that has been supplied by him and that such an omission has really been made also that supplied by him and that such an omission has really been made mm -hmm. also that every ballot paper supplied to him by the returning officer has been accounted for as provided by paragraph D of subsection, subsection 1. So we're we moving to subsection five. 5. says that nothing in subsection 3 or subsection 4 shall relieve the presiding officer from any penalty to which he may have become liable by reason of his failure to remove or destroy the counterfoil at the time of the casting of the vote. To wish it relates or to affix his initial to any ballot paper before handing it to any elector. Let me repeat this quickly. It says, shall re nothing in subsection 3 or subsection 4 shall relieve the residing officer from any penalty to which he may become liable by reason of his failure to remove or destroy the counterfoil at the time of the casting of the vote to which it relates or to affix his initial to any ballot paper before handing it to the elector. 
Carla right. from Mapen. Uh, let me see what Carla, Carla is. is say, Carla, no, Carla, say, Carla from Black Car Oh, from Black Clarice. Good evening. Bless up yourself. I see that you're in class. For the person that are coming on my Facebook Live, Jenny and Mitchell, Dion Willis, Nola Morrison, Matt Bean, Joel Booth, and Clifton Lewis, and Novia Abaro. Abaro. A pleasant Abaro. afternoon. Okay, anybody has given us the answers? Not yet? as yet. All right. Um, subsection 6 says the presiding officer shall keep a record on the special form printed in the poll, poll book of every objection made by any candidate. So if any candidate makes an objection, he's to record it in the poll book. Or so if it's made by the indoor agent, it must be made in the poll book. So itself. if any candidate goes, Mr. Chambers, mm -hmm. and say, I heard on in the North the law that my counterfoil must be destroyed and you're not destroying it and that for some reason an argument developed there that must be properly noted, noted. in the poll book as well by the presiding officer okay um and as well the so you must know the objection in the poll book or his agent or the elector or to any ballot paper found in the ballot box and shall decide every question arising out of the objection um the decision of the presiding officer shall be final. final. So while there may be objections and he may record them in the poll book, his decision. Let me say that again. For those mm -hmm. persons who are volunteering to be indoor agents yes. for your respective candidates on election day, by election day on April 4th, 2019. Remember, you can state your objection to any ballot paper, to anything that is done. You can state your objection. The presiding officer must write it in the poll book. However, the presiding officer's decision is final, mm -hmm. it is binding, and it is subject to a reversal on the final count by the returning officer or on a recount by, um, by a judge if, if, if it becomes a court, if it becomes a court issue. Mm -hmm. um, any ballot paper you want? I'm, I'm just going to jump to subsection 7. All the ballot papers not rejected by the presiding officer shall be counted and a list kept of the number of votes given to each candidate and the number of rejected ballot papers. The ballot papers which respectively indicate the votes given for each candidate shall be put into separate envelopes. Mm -hmm. So the JLP um, ballot papers that are counted for the JLP, those ballot papers will be placed in an envelope. Mm -hmm. The ballot papers that is counted for the PNP will be placed in a separate envelope mm -hmm. by the presiding Officer, all rejected ballot papers shall be put into a special envelope and all such envelopes shall be endorsed so as to indicate their contents and shall be sealed by the presiding officer. Um, subsection 8. Subsection 8 said the presiding officer and the poll, poll clerk immediately after the completion of the counting of the votes shall take and subscribe respectively the oaths in the form set out in the second schedule which shall remain attached to the poll book. Right. Um, and any statements made, the presiding officer must make copies of those statements. Mm -hmm. um, it also says in subsection 10, it, it gives some more administrative things that the presiding um, officer must the, do. The ballot, I, subsection, um, section 10, though, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. The poll book, the several envelopes containing the ballot papers, unused, spoiled, rejected, or counted for each candidate, each lot in its proper envelope. The envelope containing the official list of electors and other documents used at the poll shall then be placed into the large envelope supplied for the purpose and this envelope shall then be sealed and placed in a ballot box with but not enclosing the envelope containing the statement of the poll prepared for the returning officer and return to in sec subsection 9. Continue. I think this, the, the, the ballot the shall the then be locked and sealed with the seal of the presiding officer and if so desired, the seal of the agents or representatives of each candidate and forthwith transmitted by a registered mail or delivered to the returning officer. The returning officer may specially, may specially appoint one or more persons for the purpose of collecting the ballot boxes from a given number of polling stations and such persons or persons shall, on delivering the ballot box to the returning officer, Take the oath in the form set out in his second schedule. Anthony continues to say that any arrangements made 
pursuant to subsection 10 for the delivery of ballot boxes to the returning officer otherwise than by registered mail or for the collection of ballot, ballot boxes by the returning officer shall include mm -hmm. arrangements for the persons delivering or collecting the ballot boxes, as the case may be, to be accompanied by an agent or now, let me get this, by an agent mm -hmm. or representative of each candidate. So the ballot box mm -hmm. never stays out of sight oh. of an agent for the, for the candidate or the candidate himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes? So it is always in sight of somebody who is connected to the particular candidate. So does that omit the... the, the um the fear that we have had over the many years about stealing of a ballot box because yes, it's supposed yes, it to be properly so it is supposed to be um in the presence um joan gray simmons good evening madam co-host host and co-host love this in detective inspector joan gray simmons in charge of a divisional detective inspector pleasant afternoon to you and it's so nice to have you off on our program lord of mercy engineer take mr chambers phone all right, so we are at sub. But you can see already, we think about the food already. And it's Apple, we came to help you. All right, so I want to go to sub um, section 44A. 44, okay, A. Halting of the taking of the poll on polling day. Because many things can Halting. happen on election day, you know. Anything can happen. Mm -hmm. All right, so there shall be established on the issuing of an election notice by returning officer on the section 22 subsection 1 a body to be known as the constituted the constituted authority we shall continue in force for a period ex, ex, period ending 6 months after the day referred to in section 22 subsection 2b and um 44 2 says mr chambers the constituted authority shall have the power to halt the taking of the poll in any polling station, polling division, or constituency on polling. Them day. can halt it for the day when you have vote? Yes, man. Really? Mm-hmm. Never know that. No, the members of the constituted authority shall. Now listen to the people who can halt the poll, folks. The four selected members of the commission, that is the electoral commission, mm -hmm. and... and Two other persons appointed by the Governor General after consultation with the Prime Minister and the Leader of Opposition, mm -hmm. one of whom shall be a retired judge mm -hmm. and one of whom shall be a member of the Privy Council. Mm -hmm. So, however, that where a retired judge is not available for appointment, another member of the Privy Council shall be appointed. So those good are the persons who comprise the constituted um, Good evening. Um, Nova Martin says she's from Rockford, Illinois. Mm -hmm. Locked in. Mr. Chambers, I, I just remember something, and it is important that I do this. I just want to um, ask for a minute to, to say something, a special right. item. Um, I know we saw on the news, in a certain newspaper, where um, persons were shot last night in Portland. That is, in fact, so. What is not accurate, though, is that somebody has died. And so the newspaper... Um, I do not wish to say which new newspaper carried it that the, there was a murder in Portland last night. I don't want to say their line, but that's not accurate news. There was not a murder in Portland last night. There was a shooting, and so it is being thoroughly investigated by the Portland Division police officers, the crime department, CIB department, and other persons. So, contrary to what is in the newspaper, that there was a murder in Portland last night. That's not accurate. We did not have a murder last night, and so the murder um, starts stay as is, because there was a shooting last night um, on West Street that is being thoroughly investigated mm -hmm. as we speak, but we do not have a murder in Portland last night. I just wanted to clear that up, because I saw it in the newspapers today, and I really think... You know, somebody passed on some unfortunate news that was not true, and the, the paper printed as is. We did not have a murder last night. Okay. All right. And so, subsection five of subsection of section four A says the decision to all the taking of the poll shall be by a five-six majority 
of the members of the constituted authority. authority. Mm -hmm. Right? So the, it, it's almost one less. All right. Um, mm -hmm. The grounds on which the taking of a poll may be altered Listen carefully are mm -hmm. that one. Polling stations are not open for the taking of the poll within the period of the first five hours after the hour fixed for the opening of the poll. And? So if it is not open within the first five hours, they can just call it because, you know, it, so oh. suppose open seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right. We're talking midday there. You, you, you can't get enough voting. So, my, so it does not yes, so it's altered. Yes. Right. Or if the number of electors on the official list of electors of those polling stations constitute at least 25% of the electors in the constituency. Mm -hmm. the or the occurrence of any earthquake, flood, mm -hmm. fire, or other natural disasters which could substantially prevent or prejudice the holding of fair elections. So for those reasons, the poll can be, be halted. Can be halted. Right. All right, folks. Um, and then it's a subsection 45 says the returning officer upon receipt by him of each of the ballot boxes shall take every precaution for its safekeeping and for preventing any person other than himself and his election clerk from having access thereto sealing it under his own seal so that it cannot be opened without the seal being broken but without effa Faces. effacing or covering any other seals there to affixed mm -hmm. one subsection 1a says each candidate at an election may be noticed may be by, may by notice in the prescribed form addressed to the returning officer and delivered to him at least seven days before election day appoint agents to act as observers in relation to the safe the safekeeping and security of the ballot box back boxes rather ballot bo papers and other documents during the period given beginning of the receipt by the returning officer of the ballot boxes after the preliminary count and ending with the fourth day next after completion of the final count or her application has been made for a magisterial recount after the completion of such recount. All righty. Mm -hmm. So that is what is supposed to take place after subsequent to polling day. All right. I want now to go to another section of the act. As I said, we're trying to cover as much as we can cover section. Let's look at section 91 of the act and see what it speaks to there. Um. Is there a particular section you want to Oh, yes. At? While you're looking for section 91, I, I, let me just go back to section uh, 39, which says, um, in a little clean for 91, it says, subject to the provision of section 40, every presiding officer who fails or neglects to perform any duty imposed upon him by section 37 or section 38, you hear that section coming up again? Shall be guilty of an offense against this section and shall be on summary conviction before our resident magistrate court, which is, of course, now a parish court, to a fine not exceeding $10,000 or to be imprisoned with or without hard labor for any term not exceeding 12 months. And the parish court may, in addition to imposing a fine or a term of imprisonment, order that such presiding officer be disqualified from holding any post as an election officer for a period of seven years from the date of conviction. And so presiding officers must abide by the law, the act, the um, representation of the People's Act. Right. So some serious fines there where the presiding mm -hmm. officer does not abide by um, i samantha brian how are you doing good evening lloyd thomas monty roper from up there in uh, mount pleasant england yes you're here now so you're in mount pleasant england with your beautiful wife paula jerry good evening to you also your section what before you say, i no? go there i want to look at the, some amendments i don't think you'd have it there amendments to the act mm -hmm. that speaks to contributions to political parties and candidates okay all right. So section 52 AS, subsection 1 says, 
where a person, company, or other entity makes a contribution. Because much has been made mm. about a play on the word by election. Oh, yes. And there have been a lot of mudslinging on mm -hmm. either side. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want to look at uh, contributions that are made to political parties. Mm -hmm. Now, section 52 AS, subsection 1, says where a person, company, or other entity makes a contribution to a registered political party or a candidate during the reporting period and within two years before making the contribution had entered into a government contract, having a contract value in excess of the prescribed value, the person, company, or other entity shall declare the contribution to the commission in a prescribed manner no later than 14 days after making the contribution. Clear as crystal. Clear as crystal. Ma hmm? Go ahead. Where a person, company or other, subsection 2 or entity, makes a contribution to a registered political party or candidate during the reporting period and within two years after making the contribution enters into a contract, having a contract value in excess of the pre prescribed value, the person, company, or entity shall declare the contribution to the commission in the prescribed manner within 14 days after entering into the government contract. Mm -hmm. So what this is saying is that any company or individual who makes any contribution, any donations mm -hmm. to a political party must declare that contribution within a particular period. For one period, it says 14 days after making the contribution. And if it's two years later and you get a government contract, you mm -hmm. must declare that you, you had made this contribution mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to the p respective political party. Mm -hmm. That What we're trying to protect against here is the funneling of monies. Oh, yes. Yes, through third parties to particular candidates. Mm -hmm. So that's the mischief that they're trying to um, avoid there. Now, for the purposes, subsection 3 says, for the purposes of this section, prescribed value means the amount of $500,000. Mm -hmm. So if it's, over, if it's a contract over $500,000, mm -hmm. you must report to the commission that you had made a contribution to the particular party. Mm -hmm or such other amount as the minister on the recommendation of the commission may by order subject to affirmative resolution prescribe. Now subsection 4 says a person who or a company or an entity that contravenes this section commits an offense and is li liable on summer conviction in a parish court to a fine not exceeding one million dollars so if you do not um disclose it you can be found liable for um having committed an offense and you will be fined yes good evening dion willis and maxine from moreland saint catherine pleasant afternoon to you guys no the act also says that there are certain political contribution the amendment says there are certain political contributions that ought not to be accepted Mm -hmm. by political parties. Section 52AT, can you see it there? Yes. Go ahead. It said a registered political party or a candidate shall not knowingly accept contributions during a reporting period from any of the following states, entities, or persons that is to say, one, any foreign or commonwealth government or any agent of such government, whether directly or indirectly. You remember a certain... Um, um, matter that is in court mm -hmm. regarding a certain oh, yes. dust company. Yes. All right, yes. good. So this is aimed at that. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. A public body as defined in Section 2 of the Public Bodies Management and Accountability Act, or C, an entity where existence... Whose existence? And whose ex Oh, sorry. An entity whose... Yeah, well, you don't take glasses, man. <laughs> an entity whose existence is or activities are illegal under any law so if if mm -hmm. it's a company that is operating illegally mm -hmm. yes um but not a company any entity that is mm -hmm. th where their activities whatever it is that they do is of is a questionable character or illegal mm -hmm. then you can't accept contributions from or d them. a person or any entity whose identity is not disclosed to the recipient of the contributions. Imagine that. Can you imagine? So if you don't know who you're, it is no, coming you're from, you can't accept it. No. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no anonymous right. um, contribution. As 
e a person or any entity who makes a contribution through an inter intermediary. So you can't send it through a third party. So I can't want no say I can't send the money. Get the oh, money. And come so make get. send it through DG. Right. Yes, for DG pass it. Yes. Can't a be person done who has a person. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> I'm just moving on smartly. <laughs> I do apologize. You know, so, me think you can swipe. A person who <laughs> or an entity which uses a false identity in making the contribution. This is a little tricky though because it is. I don't know how you're going to know that the person has used a false identity. I'm mm. not too sure. Um, it's something that I will have to look into a little bit. I'm not too mm -hmm. sure how you'd know that the person has Use a false identity. I guess you have to do your due diligence. Is there. Subsection 2 says a person shall not during a reporting period knowingly make a contribution to a registered political party or a candidate that includes a contribution from an impermissible contributor. contributor. So you can't do it knowingly. Because if you do it knowingly, you're going to be in trouble. Yes, go ahead. A registered political party or a candidate who contravenes subsection 1 or a person who contravenes subsection 2 commits an offense and shall be liable on co summary conviction in the parish court to be a fine not exceeding $3 million or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 12 months. So, folks, in other words, there are legislations that are in mm -hmm. place to ensure that campaign financing is regulated. Wow. Yes, and to ensure that illicit monies are not part of campaigning. All right, so there, there, there are legislations in place, and this is a representation of the People Act Amendment um, of 2016. And you can find in it some other amendments that are quite... Curly um, Overcomer Edwards, good evening. Now, s s Section 52AV mm -hmm. says... Where during a reporting period, a registered politician, political, political party. party, or a candidate receives a contribution from an imperson impermissible missable contributor, the registered political party or candidate, as the case may be, shall return the contribution to the contributor within 30 days after the date of receipt. So if you, upon receiving, I, I, I like this rule though. Um, yes. Because upon if you find out after, yes, if yes. you find out after, it gives you time yes. to um, correct it. Yes, and without so any with penalty. Without any penalty. Mm -hmm. And so within 30 days, you can return it. Now, if you don't return it in 30 days, anything that happened to you thereafter is your fault. It is. Yes, but you the can law gives return you it all in, over 30 days in to 30 days. Make amends. Yes. Um, subsection 2 says, for the purposes of sub subsection 1, where the identity of the contributor has not been disclosed and cannot be ascertained by the taking of reasonable measures, the registered political party or candidate, as the case may be, shall transmit the contribution to the accountant Con general yep. for payment into the consolidated mm -hmm. fund. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how the government benefits either way. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I want to tell you, interestingly, coming up is a forfeiture of a contribution mm -hmm. and conviction of the offense. Mm -hmm. It says, where a contribution has been knowingly accepted by a registered political party or candidate for an imper... whatever that word is, impermissible, right, mm -hmm. contributor, and is not returned within the period indicated, of course, that is a 30 days, mm -hmm. in section 52AU, See. the uh, 2052 AUC, mm -hmm. oh, subsection C, the mm -hmm. commission may, in addition to any other penalty that may be imposed by the commission in accordance with this act or regulations made here under, seek an order from the Supreme Court for the forfeiture of property of a value equivalent to the value of the con wow, you, you, you can imagine. Let me break that down, folks. So if the money is, is found to be from illicit sources, mm -hmm. um, from an impermissible source, mm -hmm. and the party or the candidate does not return it within the 30 days, in addition to any other penalty that you may find yourself facing from the Electoral Commission, mm -hmm. you may also find that the Supreme Court may make an order forfeiting oh. the car that you have. Okay. Or a house, property, or anything equivalent that is equivalent to, to the, the 
value of the, of contribution. the contribution that was made. Um, good evening, DG and Mr. Chambers. Even though I am not, I, I, am, I am not be permanently living in Jamaica, I want to tell you many, many thanks in capital letters for always increasing our knowledge. One thing I know, whose knowledge doesn't increase is because they don't want to learn. Keep up the great in capital letters work. I love it. Thank you very much, Fitzroy and Fitzroy's. I can safely say a part of Sales FM, um, one of the, the great administrators up there in Florida along with his family. And so thank you very much. Those words does mean a lot to us as we continue to try to impart knowledge to each other and to ourselves. Because do not think Mr. Chambers and myself as not learning while we're doing these acts. And I have another interesting section, amendment to the Act. <laughs> section 52AY, subsection mm -hmm. 1 says, the total amount of contributions made in a reporting period by any particular contributor, mm -hmm. A, to or for the benefits of a candidate shall not exceed an amount equal to 10% of the aggreg aggregate limit mm -hmm. of the campaign expenditure which the candidate is permitted to incur under Section 52B, 1, or... So or that is saying... Mm -mm. So that is saying, wh whoever give you something mm -hmm. can give you in excess Says of 10% of, of the total amount of money that you are allowed to get, to have mm -hmm. by campaign, by way of um, contributions or donations. Mm -hmm. So no one person can give you 60% of your no. campaign um, Well, they're not supposed to. Yes. Two, and subsection B says, two or for the benefit of a registered political party shall not exceed an amount equal to 5% of the limit of the campaign expenditure which the party is permitted to incur. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And for the purposes of section, subsection 1B, any contribution made by a particular contributor to or for the benefit of candidates shall be treated as being on account of the limit on his permitted contributions to the registered political party to which those candidates belong, so that the aggregate of his contributions to and for the benefit of candidates and his contributions to and for the benefit of the registered political party to which they belong shall not exceed the limit specified in 1B. Can't be more than ten percent. Wow! Or more for where 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 it's a candidate, or more than five percent, where it's the political party. Yes, mm -hmm. mm -mm, cannot be. No. You have a declaration by the contributor. Yes. To, you know, the contributor must declare mm -hmm. in section fifty-two B A subsection one said any contribution made to or for the benefit of a registered political party or a candidate by a contributor during a reporting period shall be accompanied by a declaration in the prescribed form stating one, the full name, address, and occupation or description of the contributor. Oh, so it couldn't be, the, the person can be, um, the, the identity is going to be known. But that's the point. Remember, yes. anonymous, you can't accept no, anonymous contribution. No, no. So you have to disclose. Yes. And this person, the contributor must disclose full name, mm -hmm. address, occupation. And occupation, or description of, of who the, the contributor is. Yes? All right. And you also have to say that the contributor is not an impermissible mm -hmm. contributor under the Act. Mm -hmm. Where a declaration re is received by or on behalf of a registered political party or a candidate under this section, it shall be retained for the purpose of submitting it to the Commission. Mm -hmm. And subse subject to subsection 4, this section shall not apply to any contribution in an amount or having a market value of less than $250,000 or such other amount as the commission may by order subject to affirmative re resolution prescribed. So it does, if you give less than $250,000, mm -hmm. guess what? You don't <laughs> have to declare. Don't have to declare. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, also, we could I get two fifty dollars now. Mm -hmm. And a couple of weeks down the road, we give 250 more. <laughs> well, this says, this says now, 
for the purposes of this section, mm -hmm. subsection four, mm -hmm. where during the reporting period, which is during oh, yes. a campaign period, <laughs> more than one contribution is made by uh, a particular yeah. contributor to or for the benefit of a registered political party or a candidate, which exceed in the aggregate the sum referred to in subsection three. The declaration referred to in subsection one shall include all such contributions even if any of those contributions is less than, than the that sum. So that just catch you a while ago. That's what I said. So even if you break it up, <laughs> it still is going to catch you. Eh? Janet from St. Mary said, Good evening, DJ Mr. Chambers. I'm uh, late for class, but I'm in class. You're not late, man. You're still late. Uh, we're still here. Now, any contributor who knowingly or recklessly makes a false, false declaration, declaration on the subsection one, commits an offense mm -hmm. and shall be liable on summary conviction in a parish court to find not exceeding three million dollars or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 12 months there you go okay call me that is going to be 12 months <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right now what use can the candidate make of the contribution mm -hmm. all right go ahead 52BB says any contribution that is as accepted by or on behalf of a candidate during a reporting period shall be applied by the candidate for the purposes of the candidate's campaign activities and shall not be used for any personal, family, or business expenses. Very much like the U.S. You can't use um, campaign financing no. for personal um, purposes. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you do, it is a breach and you will um, will be found before the, the, um, the courts. Now, we're doing a reporting period, a contribution of or exceeding $250,000 or such amount as a commission may by order subject to affirmative resolution prescribed is accepted by or, or on behalf of a registered political party or candidate, mm -hmm. the registered political party or the candidate shall ensure mm -hmm. that a receipt in the form prescribed by the commission is issued for the so paper trail, you know. Mm -hmm. There has to be a paper trail, so you have to give a receipt for it, mm -hmm. all right? For the purposes of this section, where during a reporting period, more than one contribution is accepted from a contributor by or on behalf of a registered political party or candidate which exceed mm -hmm. they said two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a receipt referred to in subsection one shall be required to be issued including each of those contributions even if any of those contributions is less than the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars chambers interesting mm -hmm. you know the act actually make provisions for everything yes man it covers it it's, it covers it it does and verification of a contributor, subsection mm -hmm. 52BE, mm -hmm. where during a reporting period a contribution is made to, mm -hmm. or for the benefit of a registered political party or candidate, the registered political party or candidate, as the case may be, shall cause to be taken without delay all reasonable measures to verify or ascertain a... The identity of the contributor, mm -hmm. whether the contributor is or or is not an impermissible contributor, and C, in case of a contributor other than an impermissible contributor, all such details in respect of a contributor as may be prescribed by the commission to be received and given in respect of the contributor in the report referred to in section 52 BP subsection one. And 52 BBF says what? Within six weeks after an election, every candidate who's contested the election shall submit to the director a declaration in the prescribed form stating that, to the best of the candidate's knowledge and belief, no contribution from any impermissible contributor has been accepted by the candidate during the campaign period. Yes, so they must state it when? Six, six weeks. Yes. After the election, and you have a said. certificate of compliance, you know, at section 52, subsection, um, sub section 52 BG, BG. Mm -hmm. open a candidate complying with the requirements of success of sections 52 BF and 60. The director shall not, not later than 21 days thereafter issue a certificate stating that the candidate has complied with the campaign period reporting obligations under this act. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chambers, 
Well, coming down to that time. Right. But it says here, Section 52BH says, we are registered political party contest one or more constituencies in an election. The registered political party shall not incur expenditure on election expenses du during the reporting period in excess of the sum of 630 630 million why did I, I, I never see a figure dumb you yet <laughs> Millie came back so you, you, you can't spend more than six excess of million. excess of the sum of 630 million dollars or such other sum as the commission may by other subject to affirmative resolution prescribed. Six hundred whatever I'm missing. Six hundred and thirty million. Cassidy. <laughs> I know this is tricky change for you. <laughs> right? But yeah, it's chin. still a lot of money, you'd agree? Mr. Nicholas Chambers. And he's agreeing that that is chicken change for Attorney at law <laughs> of the parish of Portland. Pass it, boy, for the Teach Me Life School. Now operates out of Portland, Jamaica. Has been my co-host, Mr. Chambers. In 30 seconds, could you say goodbye to your listeners? I want to thank everyone who has joined us on WhatsApp and on Facebook Live. Um, Nathanie Dunster, um, I see you. Ty, Nicole, Garcia, I see you joining as well. Gillian. I um, want to thank you for having joined us. Richard, thank you as well. And Claudine, um, John Turner out of Columbus, Ohio. Um, wow. I saw that you were listening as well. And I want to thank you for having joined us. And I want to say to you, make sure that you join us again when we do this again. Rock all in. Carlton Toms, Johnny Buddy Weeter, Theodore Robinson, Bradwin, Christopher Vassal. Um, Claudette, of course, Curling Overcomer, Edwards, Clyde Miller, Monty Roper, uh, Inspector Joan Grace Simmons, Frank Mendes, and Cecil O'Brien, everybody else, Samantha Bryan, Inspect um, Superintendent Wayne Cameron, and Janet from St. Mary, Fitzroy from Florida, Maxine from St. Catherine, Carla, uh, and of course, uh, this person with a 2419 number with that nice name. No, nobody not give us the section. Um... No, them don't know it. Them okay. Don't, don't know the section. So we're going but, to tell you. But I'm going to tell you. It's section <laughs> what, DG? Section 30. So, well, I know the people under there, so. Just put up it all over. You want to something for me, something so. Sure. So it's section 35, subsection 3, that says that you must see to it, say the counter file is destroyed, tear up, cut up, and throw it. Or one fire and make up in the police station and burn it. And you know that's a joke, right? But mm. you must, it is your right. And so we're asking you, please, to sit with that. Listen to me now, quickly. Tomorrow evening at the Port Antonio Town Square, the Jamaica Labour Party will be having their mass meeting. And so we're going to be asking persons to make certain that you obey the police officers on duty. We might have a few traffic changes to, to see to it that you have the... the the free flow of traffic. And so we expect a very peaceful um, afternoon in the town. And so we're asking persons that are going about your, other, your business otherwise from the, with the, the roads that are designated for detour might be William Street, might be the pair, don't know the plans of the commanding officer, but I'm just saying that observe the signs, observe the police officers, and make certain that you proceed um, and get on your merry way. Good evening, Mr. Chambers, teacher from Longwood. Big up a self respect every time, positive vibes. Good evening to you, and thanks very much for being a part of the program. Of course, I want to thank my kind sponsors, um, our kind sponsors, rather, Native Artist Agent Lighting, Braham's Texaco, Task Property Appraisals, Company Limited, the bringing quality service to you. And of course, we want to thank Toya's Nails Shop Number Six, Rosemary Plaza. That's Mark B. St. Thomas, and she can be reached at eight seven six four two six five zero six six. And uh, Mr. Nicholas Chambers, he doesn't like when I do this, but I love doing it. He is an attorney at law, and he operates out of the beautiful parish of Portland. That actually shop number.